The mask is who you really are, the doctor said to Sammy Skullface. Sam scowled, saying, take this thing away. I want my real life back today. Dr. D argued, life here is better. And it's not like the desert with animals and weather, or in the ghetto with the downtrodden fools. Here I have cures, I have degrees and psychological tools. But the more he talked, the more Sam balked, until at last he got up, faced them all, yelled, You're all crazy, and ran from the hall. Then the chorus stepped in, we did try to help. He must want to live in some hell. Dr. D consoled, he'll learn us soon enough. And if he doesn't, then, well, we'll just get real tough. But don't worry, my dear, about our plan. This is just a cake of stink, it's true, I'm blue. But I won't let it stop me and you. And maybe this is not the time to worry. But Sammy's departure caused a flurry. And all my previous experiments escaped. So now we must catch them or else face fate. And as Sammy ran, far from his captivity, into this bustling and crazy mad city, he saw the cracks everywhere, and looking into the sky, saw the hugest explosion, fire everywhere did fly. The love-hate machine was gone, and soon everyone was in confusion, lost from the connected mind that they had been abusing. So there was static in the air, like coasting in despair. And Sam found Mo. he blew up the machine, said, come here, let's run before this craziness really gets fun. But just as they ran, there was the doc there in a hurry, saying, Chorus, don't worry, Sam is just a typical, a radical, no doubt, but he's just a rebel, just acting out. We'll catch him, he'll call us crazy, we'll bring him back with his memory hazy, rewrite, reprogram, rewire his mind, he'll wake up with a smile, sure that he's fine. And as Dr. D promised a chorus, he delivered. Then when he saw Sam, he raised a gun, didn't quiver. Sam awoke with a start, his mind still asleep, with the dense cloudy fog that followed him from the deep. And Mo was there complaining the world needed saving. But all Sam could think of was the rent needing raising. You're just lazy, so sit here, be crazy, while Sam toiled away, then came home at night, and yawned and stretched and swore with great might. And try and try as much as he could, Sam could not escape his past for good. So he sat watching the clock, then every night at three, a blue fairy appeared with a tincture of tea. Her name was Delilah, the nectar was soothing. It made you smile, it's true. It was simply smoothing. And he smiled while old Dr. D sat there and watched them in his tower, planning and plotting. I've captured these monsters, now onto my plan. I'll build something new to captivate, man. I'll use what I can, boss others around, and speak with a loud voice, admiring the sound. If my workers want off, I'll make them work more. If they disagree, I'll make them conform. Maybe Chorus will worry, have I lost my humanity? Am I just fast, or have I reached insanity? All of my robots, machines, and inventions, are they awesome or something less than a blessing? And secretly, every day, now at three, I'll get high, achieve ecstasy. But I'm in total control, I know what I do, chemically enhancing my IQ, it's true. And Sam used and abused often indeed. From time to time his past returned, filled full of grief. A dream within a dream, not sure which past was real. And so he drank up even more, not wanting it all to feel. When he'd wake up he'd binge and cringe, meditate to push him higher. But little voices in his mind told him that he was living as a liar. And Dr. D watched the fool in his self-created prison. This is all just a game for me and you are just a victim. You're a grade zero Joe, and no one you know. But you'll never see it, you're lost in the snow. And Mo, seeing the future, the destruction, obliteration, tells Sam, and Sam becomes furious, and he turns to face him. And seeing Sam's face, his angry heart, Mo runs away in fear. Sam tries to apologize, but Mo is bolting out of here, desperately, so dejected, sitting stooped and stolid. When a brazen nymph appears and stole his wallet, a chase ensues. He catches her, she smiles, laughs, and quickly turns and tells Sam, "I can help you out. It will be painful, but just trust me now." We'll find Mo, Stacy says. Sam agrees. Stacy pulls him close and tells him, "See." With open eyes he looks, they burn, and pain unstopping turns and turns his insides out, and down and down, he's nothing but just naked now. Now I told you it would hurt, a lot, so will you continue on or not? Sam agrees, and so they go, into the garden of Eden's bow. The 
pain in the garden was palpable to Sam. As he felt the sadness of lost souls, he did quickly understand. But Stacy told Sam, we will survive. We've made it this far, we will not be denied. Dr. D has tried and tried to control, with drugs, with technology, with laws, with roads. But our bodies yet free as God has decreed. Outside is his end, we'll survive, live in sin. But there's no time right now, we've got to keep moving. I see you scowling at the machine, but we also got to use them. Look as I open up this technological marvel, and introduce Ted. In stage he is larval, but he'll soon be mature and progressively wise. Not technotopian, but merging guy in wisdom with technological binds. I see this is true, I see you're sincere. But I need to find Mo. I cannot help you here. Listen, Stacy says, you do not understand. Mo lost himself, trying to carry out my plans. Look me in the eye, you'll know that it's true. For Gaia is my true name, the Earth Mother Blue. You know this is your reason, your duty, your credo, your reason for living, your mission, no ego. So while Dr. D plans to cause more chaos confusion, the balance will find, the truth we will fusion. Help the people learn and fill them with hope. And one day we will do more than just simply cope. The sun will wake up to the moon's silver grace, and warmth will invade these icy cold days. At last Sam returns among gray city faces, the sad ones, the hopeless, lost in their paces. He was determined at last and practicing fast. Everywhere that he went, everyone he would meet. He would do all he could to achieve the good things, see? He was quiet and homely, but honest and true. They adored him, but there was something breaking through. Dios is my name, Dr. D created me, I'm a hero now, a savior, you'll see. And this Dios magic healed the sick and the dying and promised that if they followed, they'd be happy. No lying. So they all followed Dios, who was bright and magnetic, who spoke of the future like a seer. Prophetic. Sam was unsure and he knew no quick fix. And his clumsy slow healing was no match for parlor tricks. Dios promised they followed, but something seemed hollow and empty and missing. Some political statement. The people watched and they loved and they hoped for salvation. Even course she cheered, let us make a new nation. Let us all work together and smile forever and sever the ties that bind us to endeavor. And old Sam simply watched out there with Gaia as Dios led them to building a tower and beside it a fire. Everything will burn, Dios told them, we will die. They smiled blind to the truth before their eyes. They called Sam a demon, Dios the savior. And when he said there was a problem, they said, see you later. And Sam Bach, you'll feel good as Dios brings order, but you can't spend all your life just being a conformer. To really make the change you see, takes work and action from you, from me. Well, Riot was a Bruin, Dios said they were fated for ruin, so people chose sides, either Gaia or not. But Dios smiled, a weapon he had. It was hot. I will smite down the wicked, and he did with one hand. They all backed off, unaware of his plans. And Dios grabbed the crown and with seeming amusement, he called Dr. D smiling to come forth and view this. On the TV by phone, the doctor watched all safe, alone, smiling, this is our responsibility to get ourselves off, achieve ecstasy. But there's another side story in this tale I need to share. It's when Dios and Maya met in such despair, for fate was there also candles and fear. With Dios confused, watching over with tears, the people, he said, they need much more grounding. Maya said, sign this treaty, you'll be astounded. She kissed him and promised that order would come, he would be the ruler once son of a gun. It cost him his vision, she took it politely, a bit of his soul she sucked out every night, see? And this is how order came at last, subdued and truly, how one man, could ever rule so fewly. As the days passed, they grew stranger than strange. Dr. D, quite insane, froze the day in place. 
while storms underground did rage. And Gaia knew that the hurricane was coming. She warned the people, just started running. And Sam tried to warn them as well to see, but they could not see through the veil, truly. Convinced as they were that all was just dandy, just worrying about now and how to be handy. Knowing in death a peace then would last, an ecstatic connection, a return to the past. But they couldn't believe or acknowledge that it was a ruse that Dios had been pushing them through. And the truth that was obscuring them led, from out of the darkness, restarted, it was Ted. And with Gaia's light and quiet breath, whispering, show them all please, there's hope still left. So they began their work below while up above fake order flowed. And down below, Gaia did know that day was stuck and night was aching to return again as the earth was shaking. For psychedelic shift the people tried to deny, but the time was quickly coming nigh. Well, Dr. D was far away, lost high in his own mind every day, desperately seeking to devise a new scheme to control for at last every man, child, and being. Of course, she shook her head and said, D, you're clever, but your wisdom is but a candle to she. He laughed and he saw his creation so bright, and he was self-assured none could conquer his might. But little did he know, even Dios had much doubt. The seeds that had been sown were getting ready to sprout out. And as Dr. D laughed and schemed, that's when the music began to scream. And dance and dance they all did without knowing. The return of the blood in their souls was flowing. Dr. D said, no, this is not how it goes. But Chorus said, listen, and that's when she kissed him. And told Dr. D, you cannot win. You can't control everything. So please stop. But he did not stop, and he started his machine. When he reached the roof, and that's when he saw her there also too. He thought he was clever, but not nearly by half, and that's when he was defeated by her at long last. So hope was realigning, the people's minds were now in the timing, and they had stripped off their clothes, no more ashamed to be strapped down and live a life full of blame. But it was quite painful this change these strange days, but they were no longer lost, they were all brave. And Sam, there last, he burned his last mask, and then, well, he laughed. He laughed for the world, it was winning in my. He could feel all the light, and all around and inside. As the earth then awakened, the night had returned. A quiet insideness was something they yearned. The people they saw the new world giving birth, not a needless change but timelessness coming forth. The chaos, confusion, and order all at once in a beautiful and ugly living world, and it hung. And Sam saw this all, and he smiled once again. He was now home, but something did not seem right then. When out from afar, Mo ran forth with glee. He was smiling and yelling, let us change history. And out to the desert, Sam and Mo they went, to create a new story of timeless epicness. A world not cold and lost, a world that can return. Heaven here on earth, based on truth, not crazy yearns. And so they sought the hundredth monkey, seeing reason once again, for the people now to listen, give a voice, and be human.